So in the past series of videos, we've talked about a number of methods for solving quadratic equations, ax squared plus bx plus c equaling zero. And we know that a quadratic equation can have at most two solutions. The graphing method involves graphing the corresponding function y equals and looking at the x-intercepts. And because the graph's a parabola of a quadratic function, we know there can be at only two solutions. There could be one, and if the graph doesn't touch the axis, there could be no solutions. The factoring method involves uh, factoring the expression when it's set to zero. And if two things or more than two things equaling equal zero, we know that each of those individual things would equal zero. So A would be zero or B would be zero. And so the factoring method's a nice algebraic way to solve a quadratic equation, as long as I can factor, and as long as the expression can factor, because the expression can't always factor which is when we then went to the completing the square method and that was fine but sometimes that gets a little complicated so fourth and final method we're going to look at is an actual formula that will give us the solutions to a quadratic equation now the formula comes from the process of completing the square so the first thing I'm going to do um, is to show you where this formula comes from what it is and where it comes from and I'm going to do that by solving this equation. I'm going to solve for x in this general quadratic equation. And I'm going to do that by using the uh, process of completing the square, which I did in the last video where a, b, and c were specific numbers. Now I'm just going to do it with a, b, and c being general constants. All right, so the process of completing the square, first of all, we know that the constant term c has to go to the other side. And if there's a coefficient to the uh, x squared, it needs to be factored out. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to factor out a, and that's going to give me x squared plus b over ax. And then when I complete the score, I know that that has to be some special number so that those three terms factor perfectly. But if I add something on, i got to take it away as well. And I'm bringing my constant c to the other side. Again, as I'm going through this, just try to think of the procedure, what I would do if those, if A, B, and C were specific numbers. Because I'm doing the exact same thing uh, that I did in the last video with completing the square. Now, here comes the tricky part. In order to get this number, I'm going to need to take half of B over A. Okay, well, half of B over A, which is one half times B over A, squared, would be B squared over 2a squared, which would be 4a squared. So what I want to do here is add b squared over 4a squared and subtract b squared over 4a squared. Now I'm going to group the three terms together here and I'm going to take out the last term here, but I got to remember that that's multiplied by this a in front. All right, so when I multiply the a in the front by this, I'm going to have an a cancel out on the bottom. So it'll be negative b squared over 4a. This trinomial now factors as x plus, the last term will be the perfect square of this, which will be b over 2a. And I'm going to bring this term to the other side, so that'll be b squared over 4a minus c. Next thing is I'm going to divide both sides by a. So those will cancel out. x plus b over 2a squared will equal b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Another way you can think of this divided by is multiplying by 1 over a to both of those in order to get this. I'm going to get a common denominator here. So a common denominator of 4a squared will be b squared. And what I'm going to need to do is multiply top and bottom of this fraction by 4a in order to get 4a squared on the bottom. So if I multiply top and bottom by 4a, I'm going to get minus 4ac. And you'll notice we now have our square isolated. 
And so the next step is to square root both sides, which is plus or minus of uh, plus or minus the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. The square root of the bottom is just going to be 2a. Subtract b over 2a to both sides. And so I got two fractions here with a common denominator. And so I can write that as negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is called the quadratic formula, which is the solution to the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. In other words, if you simply take the values of a, b, and c from your quadratic equation and substitute them into that formula, you will get the solutions to the equation. All right, so let's uh, do a couple of examples of solving a quadratic equation by the quadratic formula. I have here a quadratic equation in general form ax squared plus bx plus c equaling zero and the coefficients are a, b, and c so a is one, b is negative four, and c is three. And so I can use what I just developed, the quadratic formula, to get the values of x that make that equal to zero. All right, so we're going to substitute those, those in. x equals negative b, which means the opposite of what b is. b is negative 4 right now, so negative b would be positive 4, plus or minus b, which is bracketed squared, minus 4 times 1, which is a, times 3, which is c, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. So I just work this um, expression out, 4 plus or minus, this would be 16 minus 12, which is 2, 4 plus or minus 4, which is 2, the square root of 4 is just 2. And so we have two answers. We have 4 plus 2, which is 6 over 2, which is 3. And the other answer is 4 minus 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. And I have the solutions to my equation. Now, you'll notice that the answers came out to be quite nice. And that's generally a hint that the original equation could have been solved by another method, by the factoring method and indeed it could have been x is 3 and 1 All right. so um, if you're given a choice you'd want to use the faster method but the quadratic formula does work um, for any quadratic equation now let's use the quadratic formula to do something where factoring wouldn't work alright here's another quadratic equation uh, this one does not factor and I actually solved this equation when we did the video on completing the square. So um, we got the answer using completing the square, but now we're going to use the quadratic formula instead. Just to show that you do get the same answers. So a is 2, b is 16, c is 1. And so we pull out our quadratic formula, which you should know or need, need to remember, memorize, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substitute our numbers in, the opposite of b. So negative 16 plus or minus 16 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times 2 x is equal to negative 16 plus or minus 
256 minus 8 all over 4. Two forty-eight divided by four. Now, what we need to do here is this is not a perfect square, so this is going to be an irrational number. But I need to reduce my radical down, and I'm going to need to think about this for a little while. And I do mean after a little bit of thinking, the square root of two forty-eight breaks down to the square root of four times the square root of sixty-two all over 4, which is negative 16 plus or minus 2 root 62 divided by 4. And then I can divide top and bottom of my fraction to reduce it by 2, which is negative 8 plus or minus 1 root 62 all over 2, which you may recognize as the answer when we solve this equation by completing the square.